Wes, what do you think was working for you guys offensively? Uh, you know, I thought the ball movement. You know, I think we we handled the, uh, the physicality pretty well. I thought we played, you know, spatially, gave, our, gave ourselves room to play, did a better job of our setups, you know, I thought. Uh, playing downhill early uh, opened things up for us. Um, you know, and when you share the ball, it's been consistent all season. We're pretty good. You know, 30 assists, I think 43 field goal attempts. It's a pretty good percentage. And how did KP look to you in his return? He looked uh, looked good. You know, it didn't seem to have any residual issues or uh, effects that would slow him down. So, uh, you know, I think he's he's responded well. Wes, is this one of the better transition defense nights your team has had all season? Um, without looking at the tape, uh, I'd probably say, given that being a strength of theirs, then yes. You know, I thought we did a good job. Um, you know, we, we turned the ball over, you know, a handful, but you know, so did they, and that's uncharacteristic for them. Um, they're, they're number one on both sides of it, you know, turning teams over and taking care of the ball. So we were able to capitalize on some of their miscues. Defensively, then, what did your team do well? well I thought our disposition on the ball was pretty good. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the paint, they're a heavy paint team. Um, you know, they're, they're going to play downhill as much as they can. I think scoring 52 in the paint, it's not a terrible number, you know, considering um, you factor in the turnovers and, the, you know, the opportunities in transition. Uh, I thought we did a pretty good job one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, great job in pick and rolls. I thought the bigs were at the appropriate level. Just put enough pressure uh, to take, uh, take them off the pull-up three without you know, getting hurt with rolls behind uh, our coverage. What did you like about your bench crew tonight, Wes? Uh, great energy. You know, you know, Danny, I, he struggled a little bit from the field, but he, he rebounded again tonight. Uh, and that's a big piece of the, this win, being able to finish defensive possessions. Have you seen him? You've talked about kind of the confidence he's playing with and just seems to have a little bit less on his shoulders. Uh, have you noticed that kind of sustaining through this, or is he just doing something different on court? No, I think it's a level of confidence. I think he's uh, he's not pressing. You know, maybe you know uh, early in the year. You know, you're kind of buying for some minutes at times. You're worried about making an immediate impact. So you're, you're probably pressing a little bit to make something happen. Now he's letting the game come to him. Um, he's still playing with a level of aggression, but he, he's just kind of settled into knowing that this is his role. He's comfortable in that role. Um, and I think that's help, helped him, you know, excel. Took a timeout midway through the Raptors' 18-2 run in the first quarter. I guess just what's the messaging to try and you know put that. Well, you got to stop to run. <laughs> I mean, it, we we got off to a 10-0, and you know, they, of course, they bounce back. You know, at some point they will. Um, and it just kind of talk about why. You know, and a handful of those were some turnovers, the transition, um, easy baskets in the paint. Uh, you didn't want the, uh, them to kind of create a little rhythm, get some momentum, because uh, then it can get away from you. I think. Kuz talked about just, you know, sticking to your guys' game plan and knowing what they want to do offensively. I guess how does that change or what adjustments do you make going into, you know, a second game with them? Uh, there were a couple things we had issues with. Um, you know, I think we'll be able to clean that up. Um, you know, but in general, we have to know, too, that they're going to make some adjustments. And they're going to ramp it up, probably be a little more physical, uh, maybe throw a little bit more. Uh, schematically at us, whether that's zone or, or, or blitzing, you know, Brad. They were up to up at the level and you know, trying to, you know, make him get off of it. He made play after play, uh, to his credit, you know. So I can imagine, you know, they'll, they'll come up with something. What was working for you guys offensively tonight? Offensively, we stayed poised. You know, that's a great team that kind of like tries to speed teams up. You know, they play on they play in the nail, they play in the passing lanes all the time and stuff. We just had to make sure we was kinda of locked in on just like the execution side of it, you know, not letting guys rush us into anything, playing physical and just meeting their, you know, intensity on the offensive end. So once we got to that point it was all it was all good for us. What was that sequence like for you when you threw down two alley oops? I think it was in exactly a thirty second span. I know it was dope. You know, I mean, I'm always here for catching lobs and stuff, and I always say dunking is therapeutic. So I mean, I'm always happy when I'm on the other end of it. You know, and for it just to have it back to back, you know, that's just that's those are energy plays and having momentum like that. You know, going into a timeout is dope. You know, and back in my Arkansas days, all you would hear is Wood doing the uh, hall call in the um, stands and stuff, and it, it just always kind of like reminds me of something like that. You know, just having that momentum having the energy, you know, the other team called the timeout, coming around, you know, high-fiving each other and stuff and just having fun with the game. That's the main thing about it.
I know I've probably asked you a version of this before, but the one that Denny threw up to you, did you surprise yourself at all that you were able to throw that down? Uh, no, he even asked in the locker room. He was asking, did I throw it to you? I was like, no, that was perfect. You know, I always love catching like lobs with one hand and stuff, kind of like testing my athleticism because you know, I never know what I'm going to do day in, day out. You know, like I said, I do surprise myself sometimes, with the, especially like, you know, when you ask the question, it's just like every other day, you know, it's a crazy dunk for me. <laughs> so um, just put that in my goodie bag of crazy dunks that I've had over my basketball career, you know, another one in the bunch. Kind of a random, not game-related question. Mm -hmm. When you were signing autographs after your pre-game warm-ups, one guy had a picture that you signed. Mm -hmm. Did you ever look at that and be like, oh, that's pretty cool, I get to yeah, sign that? Yeah, it's dope. I think, if I'm not mistaken, either him or his dad, they like make the picture before either before they come to the game, like literally after the game that it happens and stuff, and they always bring it and they want me to sign it. So it's a dope, you know, exchange that I have every every game with those guys. Daniel, you appreciate good defense. What kind of mm -hmm. defender is Delon Wright? A great defender. You know, it's, it's always good to have a guy on you know, a guy like him on the team because, you know, he gives 110% on the defensive end, especially like when he's out there guarding some of the best players on the floor, some of the best guards on the floor. No matter what, he's, you know, always in the passing lanes. He's getting his hands on a lot of passes and stuff that I most definitely would not expect him to steal. But, you know, he surprises me night in, night out with some of the steals that he gets because he's just everywhere. You know, he's a very active guy. He's, uh, he's uh, He has active hands, and he just puts a lot of energy into the defensive end. You know, that's, I mean, pretty sure that's why he's in the league. You know, he comes in and he just you know kind of like is poised night in night out you know no matter what type of offense and stuff they're throwing at him he just you know comes in locked in and ready to go what did you like about your win tonight um i mean this was probably the biggest game of the year um i mean every game going forward is going to be the biggest game of the year but uh, i think we just did a great job of following our game plan understanding what their strengths were and how we needed to affect them and just keep them under control. And I think, I mean, I don't think we, we had about a 10 point lead pretty much the whole game. And that was probably the first time ever. So that was big. Do you feel like you can replicate the way you guys played tonight and in Atlanta for 21, however more games left? Um, I mean, that remains to be seen. I mean, we come in here and we say it every day, you know, when we have a winning, a winning streak, that uh, the tides are turning and they don't. So I'm 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 focused on next game and then the next game. And I think as a team, we need to do that. And I think if we can, we're going to give ourselves a better chance instead of looking ahead. So I feel like I should ask you about your night at the plate. <laughs> but yeah. um, what, do, what do you think about these uh, little mini series the league schedule has now and the opportunity that they present at this time of the year? I mean, I wish the league played like that the entire season. Um, I think from a, a rest standpoint, it's probably the best thing. I think I go back to my fourth year, and that was the, the, the COVID year after the bubble, and that's how the NBA scheduled it. And I think from a rest standpoint, uh, body fatigue, I, I feel like that's the best thing for you. You know, when you could stay put for a couple of days, you don't have to fly get more inflammation, I think it's really nice. And then also, it prepares you for, um, you know, this mini playoff type of series. And I think that's very, very important. You know, whether you're a veteran team or a young team, you need those type of games where you can play the same team twice and really test yourself, so. Kyle, what's been DeLon's impact on this team? I mean, everything. He's so selfless. He doesn't care about scoring. You know, he, he wants to be out there to win. And he's always been like that ever since I've known, known him for about 10 years now. So he just has unbelievable defensive instincts, uh, team first, always team first. And, um, you know, he knows, he knows the game plan and he knows what to do every night. And that's, in, that's invaluable. Have you ever had a personal 10-0 run to start a game? A few of them in my career. Not to start a game, maybe, but. Runs for sure. Just you talked about, OK, you knew what they're trying to do, you know, and you guys had a good game plan for it. I guess how does that change and what adjustments do you guys then have to make going into a second game? Well, um, you know, we just need to stay with what we did. I thought what we did was great and our game plan was great. And, you know, um, the Raptors definitely can change, but 
um, their team and their team personnel really necessarily can't. So I think for us, um, we have to understand they're going to come in and they're going to come in and, and play very, very physical, very more aggressive and probably turn it up a little bit more. And we got to deal with that. And in the past, we necessarily haven't, but you know, it's time to do that. So.